Hi, I'm John Hine with Mossy Oak Graphics. I want to show you how to do the install on our shotgun skin. The first thing you want to do is take your gun and clean it really well. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to actually disassemble this gun part way. We're going to pull the barrel off, the forend piece off. I'm going to leave the, the receiver attached to the stock, but I am going to take the barrel and the, and the forend piece off just so it's easier to get to all these, these pieces while you're wrapping them. Uh, the other thing I do is I take a Phillips screwdriver and loosen the recoil pad back here. And what that does is it creates a, a space for me to run the X-Acto knife and trim off the back of the material here at the back of the stock. So just go ahead and loosen that recoil pad a little bit with a Phillips screwdriver. You know, they've got the small holes here in the recoil pad. Just shove that Phillips screwdriver in there and, and loosen that up like I've done. And we're going to pull the barrel off and we'll be ready to go. This happens to be a 10 gauge automatic and uh, the kit is designed for uh, any single barrel shotgun. Uh, obviously this is a large shotgun to do, but it'll work on 12 gauges, 20 gauges alike. Uh, the, the kit is kind of a universal one size fits all piece. All right, I've disassembled the gun. We've taken the barrel and the forend off. I went ahead and pulled the uh, bolt out, the trigger assembly, just cause I want to be able to get in there and trim all around the receiver. But just take some isopropyl alcohol and get it on a clean cloth and do a really thorough job of cleaning all the oil off of your gun. Now make sure you take a few minutes and do a thorough job of this because it's crucial for this material to stick to your gun that all the oil is off of your gun. You just want to make sure it's good and clean. I know people that have used acetone and other cleaners as well. The main thing is you have to have something that's going to get all that oil off of your gun. So just do a thorough job underneath these ventilated ribs, you know, fold that rag and shove it through there. Make sure you get all those areas. Those are easy areas to miss where oil and dirt will hide. So make sure that you get in there really well and get this gun good and clean before you start the project. All right, so we've got our gun clean and we're gonna start with the stock piece. We've loosened the recoil pad so we can get our knife in there. Just peel this off the back and then position it on here. It's repositionable, so you've got as many tries as you want to put this, but I, I always check it with my fingers and just make sure we have enough to wrap at least halfway around the stock. And then start in the center and just use firm pressure with your fingers and work your way to the edge. If you get a wrinkle or something in it, just lift it back up and start over again until you get a nice smooth application. Now once you get to the edges where they start to curve, then you take your heat gun and you just heat this material up with a hairdryer heat gun and with heat it'll soften that material and allow it to conform around these curves so as that material gets warm it'll get soft enough where it'll look it'll just conform right around those curves just like that a little i go a little bit past the halfway point the halfway point being the edge of the stock on the top and bottom so i'm just going to work on around the stock with this heat pushing it on around the, the curves of the pistol grip here. You come to your, uh, you come to your eyelet here for your uh, sling and just take your X-Acto knife and just cut it on either side and you can just go right around it, just fold it right on around there. All right, so once you've heated it up and you've pushed it around here, you can see I've gone over halfway on the stock. I went ahead and cut around the butt plate of this pistol grip here. And then I've also trimmed out where the stock meets the receiver. The other place is you want to come in here where you've separated the recoil pad from the stock and just lay this knife, this edge of this knife right against your stock. And then it's really easy if you've separated the two to just follow that edge all the way around. Just pull that piece off and you've got this side of your stock done. So here's our right side. We're going to peel that off. We're going to do the same thing we did to the other side. Just position this where it's about halfway between the two. I always take my fingers and check it. Make sure it's about halfway. If it's not, just peel it back up, stick it down again, run your fingers right down the center of it, and then just kind of work your way towards the edges. Just overlap your fingers as you're making your way down there. If you get a wrinkle in it, just pick it back up, start over again. 
Then when you get to the edge here, just like we did before, we'll just take our heat gun, hair dryer, heat this material up, and then just go ahead and push it on into these recessed areas. You know, I'm gonna cut this material again, right where the stock meets the receiver. So if you ever have to disassemble your gun, it'll come apart, no problems. That's the one reason I don't wanna overlap onto my receiver. So I'll take my knife and I'll find the center and I'll run it right down the center of that stock. Pull that piece off. And now your seam is right along the top edge of that stock, right along there. It looks awesome from both ways. So now we're ready to do our receiver. We have two receiver sides, the left and right side. So we're gonna pull our left side receiver piece off. We're gonna lay it on here. Once again, you can reposition this. So just look at where you need to be. Check your edges and make sure you're gonna come far enough over to hit the center on both sides. Start in the middle, work your way around to the edges, just like before with the stock. But the fact that the material can be repositioned and heat, heated around curves makes it a very easy product to put on any type of firearm. So as the material begins to wrinkle a little bit on this curve, I'm gonna go ahead and put some heat to it. And then I'll go back with my finger, my thumb especially, and just kind of work that around the top of that curve, kind of pushing down the, those areas that wanna wrinkle up. This particular firearm has a recessed, grooved, ventilated rib right here on the top. And what you don't want to do is go over top of that with the material because of the depth of those grooves is that gun, if that shotgun is standing up in a duck blind, the water can run down inside of there, inside those grooves. So what you want to do is just come to the edge of that recessed area. It's very easy to see underneath this material where that line is, where it begins. And I'll just trim that material right along that edge. Now, one thing you want to do is you're trimming this out since there's pieces that are gonna slide in and out of here, I like to trim these pieces back, keep your blade angled back at about a 45 and run those edges. Now I've trimmed this out once, but there's a little lip here that's hanging over. So what I'll do is I'll lay that knife smooth against that edge and I'll just kind of come along there and make sure that I don't have anything hanging over the edge of that metal. I also do that when I come in and trim around this, this opening for the bolt. I'll go ahead and lay that blade at an angle. Instead of straight up and down, I'll angle it back towards me a little bit when I'm trimming this out so that I make sure that those edges don't get caught on anything when you're out in the field. All right, so now we're going to do the other side. Grab our right side piece here. We'll position it the same way. Just make sure that you have enough material on the top and the bottom to cover. There's a pin right here where you have to depress so the material doesn't want to lay right there so I'm going to make a small X right there where that button is and just pull this material over the top of it. And by doing that I can allow that material to lay all the way around that piece. And just like on the other side we're going to trim out right up here where the where the ventilated rib is actually recessed into the gun. All right, so we're, we're finishing up our, our receiver piece here. This is the area where the bolt is. So like I said before, you wanna take your blade and angle it at about a 45 and just follow that around. You can always come back and Trim it up a little bit, but having a, a new blade, keeping this blade good and sharp makes all the difference in the world when it comes to trimming all this out. So make sure you keep your blade new and sharp. And then I go around and I just take my finger and 
see if there's any edges there that feel like they're going to get caught on stuff. So I'll, I'll go in there just like I did right there and I'll peel a little bit off. Come back along that edge with that knife and just make sure it's all trimmed up where none of those edges catch. When you take this out in the field, it'll get roughed around. And I've had wraps like this on my guns for years and years and they work awesome. This gun that I'm doing here is one of my personal waterfowl guns, this, this 10 gauge is, and I've run cases and cases of shells through this gun with, with the wrap on it. I actually had a different wrap on it. I took it off, it'd been on there for years, and the gun is in beautiful shape underneath it. All right, now we're ready to do the barrel piece. What you wanna do is you look at the back of the ventilated rib, and that'll show you where it's gonna to touch the receiver. So what I want you to do is cut the piece to length, or close to it, then measure from the back of that receiver piece to the front of this welded ring on the barrel. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna split this barrel piece right up the center. Give yourself just a little bit of extra here. Not much, maybe an eighth of an inch. Okay, and then at that point right there, I want you to cut this right up the center of it. Okay? And by doing that, you're gonna allow two halves to go on either side of your barrel. And that will allow the material to shape around the forcing cone, which is in your barrel back where it meets the receiver. See how your barrel will get wider right here? And by doing this, you're gonna allow these two halves to lay on either side of that. Now, the material won't touch completely underneath here, but it won't matter because your, your uh, forend piece is gonna cover all that up. So just double check and make sure your pieces, you cut the length you need. I've got a good length here. The other thing I'll do is I'll make kind of a T cut so that it'll fit around that welded ring right there. So just go ahead and you can go in there where you've made your cut, you've split this piece in half, just go ahead and make a little T right there with your scissors, okay? And now you have that, you're ready to put on your barrel. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the backing off of here down to where I've made that T. So I'm just gonna pull the backing off down to where that T is, and then I'm gonna cut the paper backing off, okay? And by doing that, you're just gonna allow the adhesive to only show on the piece that you're working on on the barrel, okay? So now you've got your two halves, paper backing still on them, and you're ready to go. So turn your barrel upside down, and start right at the base of your welded ring here. You gotta center that up onto there. Okay, so we've got this centered, right? We've got our two halves that are gonna go down either side of your barrel. You're gonna push that down and then just work with overlapping pressure with your thumb and work that piece on that barrel. Making sure that you don't have it, you don't leave any wrinkles or air gaps in there. So just go back and forth till you get that all the way to the ventilator rib base. Now keep in mind this is a 10 gauge. So this barrel is pretty good sized. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pull the backing off of this side. I'm going to pull the backing off of there and I'm just going to go ahead and lay that up right down this side here. Make sure you have enough to come up to the base of the ventilated rib, All right? And then just go ahead and push that down as well. Work that all the way around. If you get a little wrinkle like I did there, just back it up and just start over again. We're gonna flip this over, pull this backing piece off as well, and lay it down this side. Just make sure you've got enough up here as you go all the way up to the base of your ventilated rib. And we're just gonna trim out around your ring here, cut that, and go ahead and just lay that all the way down. Same thing goes on the other side, lay that side down. And as you can see, it doesn't touch all the way underneath it, especially where the forcing cone gets wider back here. But that's fine, you'll never see that because you're your forearm will be covering all that up. It doesn't matter if you've got a pump or an automatic. Works great the same way on both, okay? 
So now that we've got our barrel piece up here along the ventilator rib, what you want to do is come along and just trim this out right at the base of the ventilator rib. Now you're going to have to go up and over those ventilator ribs, right? So you're going to just run this knife right along that edge. It doesn't have to go up and underneath that ventilated rib to look like it's completely camouflaged. So just run those right over those ribs and then down in there. Once you get that loose, you can just lift that piece up, take it off of there. And then make sure you've got that pushed down really well. So go along with that, with that it along that edge, go along with your finger or a credit card or a little squeegee or something and make sure you shove that edge down really good. That's one of the reasons why you got to clean underneath there so well. All right, so we've done the stock and the receiver and the barrel piece. We've got the forend left to do. You have a single piece to do your forend. So what we're going to do is we're going to center this up on here. We're going to wrap it all the way around. So lay your forend down. Obviously, if you've got a pump gun, you don't have a forend nearly that size. This one here is huge off of this 10 gauge. You can pull that backing off, center it up, make sure you've got enough material on both sides to make it all the way around, which we do. Start in the center. You get a wrinkle, just back it up. And smooth it down. All right, so we're, we've wrapped it all the way around. I'm trimming it off of this edge. Just lay your knife along here, trim along. You've got the ends to do as well. So I just come along and trim it right off the very end. I'm not too worried about, you know, putting it over the end of the, the uh, fore end. I just kind of come right along the edge here with my knife. Push that right around that edge. Any little pieces that are hanging off, like this little flap, just make sure you just trim that off. You don't want anything that's going to be hanging out there to get caught on anything. This edge along here, just run your knife right along that edge. All right, so we've got that. Make sure you push all these edges down. There's the front. We're going to come around here to the back of the pour in. We'll trim that off, and then we'll be ready to reassemble our gun. It'll be done. Now this particular gun came with a chrome bolt on it, so I tried this a few years ago and I actually found that this stuff will actually stay on the bolt. Just get it good and clean. You can put it on there as long as there's clearance in your gun. This material is very thin. You can put it on this bolt and trim it off. And believe it or not, it'll stay on this thing running back and forth with all the oil and the, the shooting that your gun does. So I'm going to go ahead and trim out this bolt here just to finish the camouflage application so there's no turkey seeing this beautiful shiny bolt on my gun here. All right, so we've reassembled the gun. We've put a little bit on the bolt here because it was chrome. That won't work for the turkey season. But anyway, we've switched this over now. It did have a, a grass pattern on it, the duck blind pattern for waterfowl hunting, and now we've got breakup infinity on it for turkey season coming up. But anyway, what I want you to do, once you reassemble your gun and get it all together, just use some post heat which is basically taking your heat gun or your hair dryer all over this. Once you heat it up, use firm pressure with your hand and just push all this back down into all these little grooves and recesses and spend about 10 minutes with the post heat, get this material good and warm and shove it down really hard. Push it down really well all over in all the little areas. Once you've got that done, make sure you leave it in a warm environment for about two days and you're ready to go hunting.